What's up guys, Hong Nguyen, OG Fitness. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about does BJJ condition your body? <laughs> Okay, so let me read you guys the question from our friend, uh, Luxury Lifestyle, uh, sent me this question, of course, on uh, IG. Uh, if you guys do send me questions there, uh, I'm more active as of late on there, so I'm going to answer them a little bit, well, as fast as I possibly can. Email is always the best way, because that way I won't forget it, because it's there in front of me, in my email, right? Whereas uh, sometimes, um, you know, like if I'm on IG and I read a message and then I forget about it, then I, you know, get back to it a month later and that's just what happens. Like that happens on email too, but not as bad, you know, like I might forget it for a day or two and then I eventually have to check my emails again, as opposed to IG sometimes, you know, I just disappear. So anyways. <laughs> okay, so hey coach, I hope you're doing great. Got one more question. I decided to do BJJ first, then move to Muay Thai training. I asked the following question on Quora and only one guy answered. What are your thoughts on this? Okay, so the question that, um, that our friend here asks on Quora is, does BJJ condition your body and improve your punching strength? Uh, do I need to condition my legs and arms with heavy bags or do I, or no need uh, for that? Uh, if I do six times BJJ per week. <laughs> and then there's a gentleman that answered them here. Um, let's see here. So it, his name is Donald Tepper uh, on Quora. And he, this is his answer. My son is a MMA fighter and BJJ black belt. So I guess Donald said that to put into context that, you know, he maybe got this information from his son or maybe he knows he's a coach. I don't know. But his question, his answer, sorry, is yes, BJJ conditions your body. I don't know, guys. I don't know. But in my opinion, it depends what you mean by conditioning. Do you mean like condition your body for BJJ? Yes, in the sense that you'll develop muscle and efficiency and movement patterns for BJJ but condition your body because me, when I, when, I, when, when I say condition and when I understand, when somebody tells me conditioned, it means that your body is tough, strong, your bones are, are, are able to take a beating and even your muscles, like you've, you've been conditioned, right? Like conditioning your shins, conditioning your fists, you know, conditioning even like everything in your body essentially could be conditioned except to, except your brain. Like you can't condition against, um, well, you know, your brain, it's inside, you can't really condition it. And I mean, if you, you know, rock your brain all the time, you're going to get concussed and it's going to lead to brain damage and a whole bunch of other issues. So does it condition your body? I would say no, if we're talking about conditioning as in if it hardens the body. Uh, no, it, it, it conditions you for that specific sport in a sense, but it doesn't condition your body, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, does, and then no, BJJ does not improve your punching strength. Well, obviously, because there's no punching and kicking in, uh, there's no striking in BJJ. So if there's no striking, it's not going to make any of that better. But there is a little something there that might help because BJJ does condition, gets certain muscle groups stronger because it is exercise and you're going against resistance, like your own body weight and of course other people's body weight on top of you. So you will get, you know, stronger and build endurance and, and all that and build conditioning for that sport. And that can somewhat translate to punching power, somewhat. But I would lean on the side of no more than anything else, okay? So yeah, uh, BJJ does not improve your punching power. So um, um, I'm right there with Donald on that. Uh, and then the other question, uh, the other answer, I'm sorry. So no, you don't need to condition your legs and arms with heavy bags, particularly if you're doing BJJ six times a week. Uh, once again, this is where I don't understand the question. Like, um, because if you're gonna do Muay Thai, uh, Muay Thai, they condition themselves on the bag. So they're punching the bag, you know, uh, kicking the bag, conditioning your shins on the bag, their knees, their elbows, 
uh, you know, their fists. <clears throat> and if you go left way style, they could, you know, with the head butts, which is pretty cool. You know, I, I, I recently discovered that actually. So I'm going to make a video about that and what I think about left way. Amazing, savage, pure savage sport. Anyways, okay, so let me get back to uh, Donald's answer here. And, you know, so I'm just critiquing his answers. Not critiquing, giving my two cents on it. Okay, so you don't need to condition your legs and arms with heavy back, particularly if you're doing BJJ six times a week. Well, for BJJ, you wouldn't, but if you want to do Muay Thai, uh, if you're doing it, then yeah, you have to condition yourself. You have to be conditioned. Uh, a fighter is conditioned, and you have to be conditioned for your sport. Now, if you're talking self-defense, then you want to be conditioned like across the board. Your whole body should turn into a weapon. Okay, if your concern is really self-defense, like everything from your fingers to your toes, to your jaw, to your neck, to your everything, everything has to be like steel, essentially. Um, that way, uh, because that actually comes in very handy in a fight. Think about that. Um, I'll make another video about that because it's a really interesting topic, guys, in terms of conditioning, because I know a lot of the TMA guys talk about that. And I know that I used to be one of those sports combat people, um, you know, like who in the, during that time that I only did BJJ and I was against all that conditioning stuff. I was like, yeah, it's nonsense. But turns out it's not, guys. It's not. So anyways, back to what I was saying. Yes, if you're going to do Muay Thai, you're going to need to condition your legs. If you just do BJJ, well, obviously, uh, in the sports context, no, you don't need to waste your time doing that. But if you're concerned with self-defense, or you want to go into Muay Thai. Well, if you go into Muay Thai, you're gonna get conditioned anyway. But if, you, if you're concerned with self-defense, well, you're gonna to have to do some kind of striking art, first of all. And if you do some kind of striking art, yes, it's definitely something to consider. Uh, I would, you know, and I would even encourage you to condition yourself, okay? Mm, okay, and here you go. So, side note. This is a, I'm continuing the answer from Donald. Uh, Muay Thai will improve your punching strength and you'll condition your legs and arms with heavy bag if training for Muay Thai. There you go. Uh, however, BJJ involves no punching or kicking. Okay, so we already touched on that. And yeah, of course, Muay Thai is going to condition your arms and legs, you know, because you're, you know, well, that's what Muay Thai, a big part of Muay Thai is conditioning. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Improve your punching strength. Punching, punching strength. Okay, here's the thing. If you want to be able to punch harder, okay, it's going to, ha it has a lot to do with technique. A lot to do with technique and of course if you build up your body so that your muscles are strong in that movement pattern then your you know your your power is going to be your punching power strength is going to be better uh, but then after that you know there's something that um, there's two things what type of muscle fibers you have that determine how explosive you are when you throw that punch right like and then from there and there's also um, some now don't quote me on this but it has to do with how your insertions uh, of your muscles are right like if your bicep is here and it is like there's origin and insertion okay <laughs> it's been a while I haven't picked up the anatomy book but let's say your bicep inserts here as opposed to here it's gonna make a difference in how hard you punch I'm not sure which one is better. Uh, I'd have to think about that. But anyways, it, it changes um, leverage and, and structure and everything when you punch. I heard John Jones say this in an interview once and it made a lot of sense. So depending on how your muscles uh, originate, where they originate on your body, right? Origin is usually more towards the center and they insert towards the exterior somewhere. Okay, where they originate and where they insert, okay? might actually affect punching power but then on top of that the other genetic component right is well how fast switch are you all right there's different levels to that you, you notice guys that are just born you can't really train explosiveness you can maximize the explosiveness that you're genetically predisposed to have but that's it like if you if you're not born explosive you know like marathon runners tend to have those um, slow twitch muscle fibers so they're really good at for endurance but they're not good for you know uh, sprinting for example and vice versa right so 
there you go. So you can do a lot of things to improve punching strength and power and speed and all that. But then there's the gene genetic component, which essentially you can't really do much about. Um, so I hope that answers your question. And uh, that's it, guys. So let me know, guys, what you think down in the comments. Um, right? Do you agree? Do you disagree? And if you have any advice, you know, for uh, for a friend here, you know, it's a community. So let's talk about it, guys. Uh, appreciate every single one of you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share the video and uh, all that stuff because it helps to grow the channel. The bigger ch this channel grows, the more I'll be able to uh, provide uh, more and content and quality both at the same time. So more and better. <laughs> Love you guys. Peace.